So thanks everyone for uh, coming to a uh, talk on uh, OCI, which essentially is all about uh, container standards and bringing the container community uh, together. Today we have uh, four speakers. Uh, my name is Chris Anizik. I have the fun job of um, helping kind of run the wonderful back office stuff of the Open Container Initiative, also with uh, CNCF and some other Linux Foundation things. And I'm Jeff Borick. I'm with IBM, and I've been working in and around uh, the container space uh, since uh, 2014 when I started working with uh, Docker. And I actually at one point was the chair of the Docker Governance Advisory Board, so I, I was there. Hi, I'm Rithulina John. I am a software engineer at Lyft. Before that, I worked at CoreOS and Red Hat. Been in the container space for a while now. And hey, I'm Patrick Chanazon. I'm, I work at Docker. I help create OCI. Uh, and mainly, my, my main role in OCI is just to uh, attend the meetings and take pictures uh, while the engineers are discussing about the specs and drinking beer, like last night. <laughs> Let me go back one. Everyone pull out your mobile. <laughs> Follow these experts on Twitter. <laughs> so we're going to cover this agenda. We're going to go through this very formally, as you can tell by the way we've set the uh, stage for today. Uh, so I'm going to encourage questions. If you have some things you want to shout out, I don't think it's going to throw anyone off, but we're going to go through a lot of material pretty quickly. And I hope you'll find it all entertaining. So how many think containers are brand new? <laughs> Good. They've been around for a long time. Uh, our friends at Google have been leveraging the heck out of the containers for over a decade. And as you can see from the slide up there, a lot of people over the span of the last uh, 18 plus years have been doing a lot to advance the ball. And this is not even exhaustive, right? So if I've left something off or, or neglected someone, Please forgive me, but these are some of the highlights. The free uh, BSD jail started in the year 2000 as an early effort. And then Linux vServer came on the uh, scene not too far after that. Solaris, uh, the leading uh, flavor of Unix at one point of time, introduced zones. And even, as I mentioned before, Google was a big part of just massively leveraging containers back when most people we're not focused on the technology because it was still fairly challenging to really effectively leverage. And then our, our friends at Red Hat came along with namespaces. And even IBM collaborated on a technology called LXC to kind of unify some of that and really make it a bit more usable. But containers really didn't take off until uh, Solomon Hakes and the early team at Docker got together. In fact, that's when Patrick and I first met was uh, you were transitioning from prior job just to join this radical startup called Docker. So a lot of people have had a hand in evolving this technology. So in order to, and I love this, uh, Chris uh, actually pulled this, I believe, off the web. One of my favorite tweets. It's great. I, I fought, you fought in the container wars? Yes, I was once a developer, the same as your father. So. What needed to happen here is that I think a lot of people that had been in the industry really appreciated the value that Solomon and the team at Docker had brought to containers in, terming, in terms of making them much more easy, easy to consume and for the average developer sysadmin to begin to leverage. But it was so fundamental and yet so revolutionary and such an, you know, a, a solid incremental advancement that you know, many of us thought this really needed to be something that was shared under open governance. And as I mentioned earlier, I collaborated with Docker on some early advising around the topic of governance. And ultimately, that led to the formation of the OCI. And that was announced on, at the Docker conference on stage by Solomon back in mid-2015. So just an amazing uh, gathering of industry leaders to come and work on this. Um, but it wasn't just Docker. Um, uh, a shout out to Alex and uh, Brendan and the team at uh, CoreOS. You know, they were working and collaborating on all sorts of interesting technologies back at the time, etcd and other things. And there was a proposal to put out a, an alternative project called Rocket. And it was done really, I think, as a way of underscoring the importance of choice and alternatives. And yet, 
nobody wanted to see a future world where you had to start to think, well, wait a minute, you know, is this something I need to decide at this level of the technology? And so as part of this OCI process, uh, both technology from Rocket as well as from Docker contributed to the specification process. And ultimately, Run C became the code base that was also contributed to essentially found the OCI in the early days. And again, it wasn't just these two companies. Lots of other companies and players were involved. Uh, it was a very interesting time in the evolution of the whole container phenomenon. Here's a quick slide that just shows you know, some of the other players I referenced. Uh, I'm you know, proud to have uh, been a small part as IBM. Whenever I mention IBM in open source, I like to say I stand on the shoulders of giants because in the early days of open source, back in the whole Apache Linux Eclipse phase, you know, IBM did some very fundamental positive things to help nurture an open ecosystem. So it was nice to be a small part of this activity associated with the development of uh, open containers. And then lastly, just as a quick slide, you can see just how important Docker was to this effort, as well as the efforts of Red Hat, um, another company I like, <laughs> uh, as well as some of the other players associated with this. That's all I'll say about Red Hat today, by the way. Um, but you can see that many, many companies contribute, have contributed to the OCI initiative over the last five years. And so it, it really is a true community. In order to learn a bit more about this process, I'm going to turn it over. So I'm going to go ahead and dive a little bit more about containers and OCI. But let's first talk about the container market boom. Containers solve a very important problem for us, how to deploy your software when, and reliably have it when you move from one environment to the other. The container comes completely packed with everything that it needs as a runtime environment, the application, its dependencies, the configuration files. So you're almost guaranteed portability because it comes as one big bundle for you. And now, um, when we saw all of this excitement around containers, a few of the big players were a little not confident in this because it was still relatively new. But it did come with all of these promises of scalability, of portability, resource efficiency, speed, because we all know you can almost instantaneously spin up a container. And it's operationally very simple, and security is almost a given if you orchestrate it correctly. So let's take, take a step back and go through a, the timeline of what happened before OCI was launched. In about, um, I want to say, November of 2014, the Docker image format Circa was introduced. It was more of a fluid format which continuously kept evolving. And it was fine at that time because there was so much change going on around. But there was no uh, way to sign it. There was no content um, addressability. So then we at CoreOS, um, who were also very heavily invested in the open standard space, came up with AppC, which was application container, which was a specification, and Rocket was built around that. So we had a container engine for it. It was also quite widely adopted. Um, and then in April of 2015, Docker came out with version 2.2, which was also Circa. And they fixed a lot of the issues with problem one. Um, this time, you could sign it reliably. It was optional. You could turn it on and off if you wanted. Um, and there was content addressability. And all of this finally culminated in June of 2015, and OCI was launched. So the idea behind that was we came together as a big, wide community and decided that we needed to get some standards in place so that we can help everybody. Um, this slide kind of shows us as a better timeline of OCI was launched in June of 2015. Um, it was initially launched with, the, with just the runtime specification. Later on in April 2016 is when the image format specification project was launched. And from then on, we've had lots of successful revisions and versions that a lot of adopters have been um, involved in. Um, and this is not an exhaustive list. This is all of the OCI adopters. We've seen a lot of success from all of these big players who've jumped into the market um, pretty early on. Just to name a few, CoreOS, Docker, Mesos, Cloud Foundry. Um, we've had a very active community, and that's been pretty great. 
So next, I would like to go off on a little bit of a tangent and kind of talk to you about the examples of how containers are actually adopted in the industry nowadays. I've been lucky enough to join Lyft um, three weeks ago, and I've been trying to understand how their container architecture works. And just to give you a little bit of a background, Lyft runs more than 300 microservices across 40,000 EC2 instances. So you can just imagine when you want to move all of this from a well-orchestrated system into Kubernetes, it's not going to be easy. If there's one thing we've learned over the past few days at KubeCon, migration for enterprises to Kubernetes is not easy. But we're actively working on it. Um, we use the Envoy service mesh for all of our network needs. And some of, us, some of our production services do run on it now. Most of our machine learning services do run on it, and we've seen success. And we're working very, very quickly to get the rest of it in production. So I think when I take a step back and look at it, Lyft is just one of the examples where you can see success because we've, see, we've adopted Cryo. For those of you who don't know what Cryo is, it's a lightweight Kubernetes um, runtime uh, uh, container. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and we've adopted that and Docker at the same time, and we've seen success with both. And it's great to have a little bit of competition because you kind of, <laughs> I see him giggling at the back, but I think you can make a more um, innovative choice and see what works for you best. Um, and next, I think this is my favorite slide of the deck because I think it so well summarizes the mission of OCI. It's agreeing on the width of the train tax so that we can all go off individually and try to build the fastest engines. And now I'll hand it off to Patrick so he'll dive into some more examples. Thank you. Just real quick, show of hands. How many are running more than 300 microservices over 40,000 uh, endpoints on EC2? How many are exceeding that? Pretty impressive for Lyft. Pretty impressive. That's pretty good. So let, let's talk about, uh, th thank you, Rifu. Uh, let, let's talk about some examples of uh, these faster engines that we can build now that we have agreed on a, uh, on a on a base of interface and standards uh, uh, for running them. Uh, so at Docker, uh, the original Docker code base was a, like a big spaghetti code base uh, that exposed a very simple interface to the end user. Uh, and over the past few years, uh, the engineering team at Docker, one of their main job has been to refactor all that uh, into components. Uh, and one of these very important components is the ContainerD project. And so ContainerD is the, uh, is the core engine inside of Docker, and it's using RunC, which is the reference implementation for the OCI specification. So that's kind of the, uh, the architecture of ContainerD. Uh, there's been two talks at Docker, at uh, KubeCon, uh, one uh, for beginners and then one a deep dive yesterday. So if you want to learn more about ContainerD and understand the architecture, you can dig into these and try to find the videos for them. Uh, but essentially, ContainerD over time grew into just uh, a daemon to control Run C that would just that, that would just generate the image uh, and then the OCI bundle for it uh, into uh, getting the images, uh, laying them on the file system, uh, and then doing the distribution as well. And as ContainerD grew, we actually grew the set of OCI specifications. The first spec that we agreed on all together, like all these, uh, I think we're 40 members now, uh, was really about the container runtime, uh, like the, 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 the spec uh, uh, for how to create a container. The second one was the image format, and uh, now we're working on a distribution spec as well. And so ContainerD implements all that stuff. And one of the value that having a spec brings to us in ContainerD is that when people start to innovate at the runtime level, we can just plug different runtimes. And so we collaborated with the Kata people, for example, uh, to add uh, Kata as an option there. Uh, and I'll tell you more about uh, other examples of that. Uh, so in Docker, ContainerD has been the core container runtime in Docker since uh, 1.11 in 2016. Uh, and that has brought a lot of, uh, a lot of advantages uh, uh, to Docker Engine. Another example of runtime, uh, Rithu talked about that, is uh, Creo that's made by Red Hat. 
Uh, one of the interesting uh, uh, aspects of the dynamics in the industry right now is that uh, uh, with all the uh, consolidation that happened in the industry in the past few years, uh, basically soon at IBM there will be three runtimes, uh, <laughs> Container D, Creo, and Rocket. Uh, so that should be an interesting exercise for Jeff to solve all that. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, Refuse example, I think, is, is very, uh, uh, that's very typical of the value of having choice. Uh, uh, the fact that at Lyft they're, they're running both Docker and Creo, uh, to me, speak, uh, uh, speaks a lot about the value of having a standard specification and then lots of different implementation that can compete on different, uh, uh, different trade-offs. Because in engineering, it's all about trade-offs. Uh, and, and having different engines that uh, solve for specific use cases uh, better uh, allows you to explore the space uh, with different trade-offs. And I'll tell you about a few examples of that. Uh, one of them is Pouch, uh, made by Alibaba. So that's another container engine uh, that's using uh, Container D inside uh, and run C. Uh, and like, uh, like Docker, they, they have the ability to plug uh, different runtimes, uh, like uh, Kata containers or run LXC. Uh, and one thing I found interesting on the Alibaba side is that they had, um, uh, they had a very specific use case where they needed to migrate uh, legacy applications that run with systemd. Uh, so to have containers that have systemd in them and a bunch of stuff. And so they extended the spec a little bit to create what they call uh, rich containers or something like that. Uh, so I wonder whether maybe they will uh, submit that to OCI for standardization or whether it's uh, just a particular use case. Uh, but what I really liked in the way they implemented it is that they stuck to the OCI spec and then they used the hooks that we have in the spec. We made it extensible to be able to uh, add behavior to that. Uh, and then another example, I, I talked to you about that before, is uh, one of the trade-offs uh, that's really interesting is in, in terms of uh, speed of starting your container. It's very fast to start it on Linux. Uh, uh, you just need to set up some namespaces on C groups. Uh, uh, but then you have less isolation that you would have with VMs. And so the, the Kata team created the Kata container runtime. You can replace uh, run C by the Kata container runtime, and they are implementing the OCI spec, and it gives you uh, VM level isolation. Uh, and I wanted to conclude on a, uh, an even more recent use case. So this one, uh, uh, this one is literally, uh, I heard about that uh, two days ago. Uh, so I went to see uh, uh, Derek's talk uh, uh, where, uh, about container D, and at the end of the talk, we gathered with uh, uh, people from Microsoft, Amazon, Google, uh, uh, Docker, uh, and uh, Cruz. Uh, Stephen was there. Uh, and so we, all, uh, we, we just all went to the Amazon office uh, next door, and uh, they showed us a prototype that they built that's on GitHub. You can find it. That's called Firecracker Container D, where uh, they implemented a runtime based on the Firecracker VM uh, that they created that, that's targeted to a very specific use case and uh, uh, with a, a, a very specific set of trade-offs that they wanted to implement there, uh, where they want a, a very fast boot time uh, uh, for high churn. So it's really for uh, the type of things that you would have in serverless kind of workloads. Uh, and they wanted to implement that in container D so that it could just plug directly in Kubernetes and you could have pods. Uh, so your pod is a VM and then they can start containers inside. What I found super interesting there is that they really followed as much as the OCI spec as they could, leveraging all the code that's already in container D and in run C for that and just adapting the shim so that, uh, uh, for example, when they, when they spin up a VM, uh, the container D, which is pulling the images, needs to make them available inside of the VM. And so they, they created a new snapshot there that makes it available, uh, that makes these snapshots available inside of the VM uh, as block device. And then they have a VSOC uh, inside of the VM uh, that the agent is using to communicate with container D and to pass all the FIFO for uh, uh, the TTY and things like that. So that, that's a very promising proof of concept. You can try it out. Uh, it's really a proof of concept right now. I think the, 
you can have only one container inside of the VM and uh, its ID is hard coded to 30. Uh, but we found that very promising and they started interacting with the team to see what the best architecture could be. And then the last thing I wanted to, to finish on is uh, uh, in terms of uh, new development for OCI, new type of stuff we could uh, standardize. Uh, uh, Microsoft, Docker, and many others uh, released a spec last week at DockerCon that's called uh, Cloud Native Application Bundles. The goal of that spec is to be able to bundle uh, applications that are based on, on containers, infrastructure as a service, manage cloud services as well as serverless functions into a single uh, OCI image. And so they leverage the OCI standard to the maximum. At Docker, we implemented that in our Docker app ex um, experimental tool. And uh, one of the discussions we had yesterday in the OCI face-to-face -face meeting, the people from Microsoft came there uh, to talk with the OCI maintainers about uh, what should we do with that spec, should it live in OCI, what do we do for distributions of these and all that. So that, that may be a very interesting angle for the future. So I'll leave it at that for the examples, and uh, Chris, do you want to talk about the current yeah, state? We'll just kind of close things up and maybe ask uh, the audience if there's any questions. So yeah, I mean, uh, the OCI is just a kind of very simple open source project with a variety of different uh, projects there. We have spec projects, tools projects, and a couple of utility projects. You could just go to github.com slash open containers and check them out. Um, you know, most people ask, uh, you know, what is, what is OCI going to do in the future? You know, are you kind of done yet? What else is there to standardize? I mean, the, the goal kind of for the organization is to keep things stable. You know, people appreciate the stability that uh, OCI has brought to the industry around containers. Um, there's a couple things around uh, distribution. Spec was created as a project, but it hasn't shipped uh, as a 1.0 yet, so that will be happening uh, next year. Um, as Patrick mentioned, we had the uh, CNAB team um, at a little OCI face-to-face -face yesterday discussing whether CNAB uh, makes sense for OCI, or you know, potentially maybe it goes in CNCF, but we're having these discussions uh, to kind of you know, find a proper home for, for that project. And uh, you know, just like any wonderful open source organization, we have our elections and all this kind of type of back office uh, stuff that you, that you have to do to kind of keep things going. So we'll be running those uh, next year. Other than that, like, um, you know, standards work and specification work is generally not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's super critical to kind of get, you know, A, all these companies in a room kind of decide, like, what will be commoditized, and so end users and others, folks, don't have to kind of worry about all the, you know, infighting or being locked into a, a specific company. So I think we've been very uh, super successful at that, at trying to keep containers as boring uh, and simple um, as possible. I don't know how many of you kind of lived through the uh, browser wars of the past, but you know now uh, you know we could basically go to you know any site and be confident. It generally, works across browsers, and we just choose what works for us based on you know whether you're comfortable with Chrome, Firefox, or you know whatever boutique uh, things. And we kind of want to see the same thing happen with containers in the future, where uh, you don't really care about the you know specifications or specs. You're just happy things things work. So um, that's about it. I think if you want to get involved. With the community, it's in, just like any other source community. They host meetings, they have repos, uh, mailing lists, and so on. So uh, please get involved if this you're interested in this type of work, or if you're actually using OCI in some strange ways. You know, like Patrick, you know, demoed the kind of or, or showed off the firecracker work that the AWS folks were working on. That's kind of brand new. So a lot of people are doing interesting things, and please share them with us. We, we definitely want to kind of document and learn about them. But other than that. Thank you for um, listening, and we'll open it up to any questions if folks have them. And, uh, I think, uh, isn't it right that the top three questions get like a $50 Lyft gift certificate? Is that right? <laughs> or something like that. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Got a question over there? Uh, sure. Why not? Okay. I was um, trying to inquire as of uh, LXC version uh, 3.0, have you, is there seamless integration now with, uh, since they now have an OCI template, and have you actually seen that uh, uh, run uh, within a, how can I put it, uh, within container D or within any of the other runtime engines seamlessly? I don't know off the top of my head, do you? I, I haven't. Uh, Steven, do you know? No. No, I haven't seen that. Any other questions? I'll shoot you a card. We'll get you an answer. <laughs> 
Cool. I think that's it. Otherwise, uh, thanks everyone and to enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.